Good morning and welcome everybody again. This is Mondo Homunculero and this is my video blog. This morning we're going to deal with a few minutes of 12-step cultism. Apparently some people have been uh, listening to some of these uh, vlogs that I did over the past several years uh, about my experience in the 12-step program and my opinion of it. The program, admittedly by people in it, does not work, well, by many people in it, does not work for everyone. It is not a be-all, end-all for addiction. There's a lot of premises that are false. We've discussed those. Addiction is not a disease. Alcoholism is not a disease separate from addiction. It is a condition that people have within addiction. Okay. And ism uh, <laughs> gives it kind of a, a flavor like it's some kind of a political or ideological uh, uh, syndrome. It's not. Uh, alcoholism is a, another form of chemical addiction. And it really works in conjunction with other drugs, so it's all addiction, really. Now, the premise that fails there is that it's a progressive incurable fatal disease. It's not a disease. It's, it's only progressive in those, uh, in those addicts who keep using toxically and destroying themselves and creating other pathologies. That's where it becomes pushing people over into the realms of disease, but the addiction uh, disorder is not a disease in itself. And the D DSM, whatever volume it's on now, has, has stated that. That's, that's the deal, guys. <clears throat> so people come in and they, they get offended. They take personally what I say about my experience in the program and my opinion of the program. I think the program is only a solution for a few. I don't think it's a solution for the many. The many break down into a lot of different categories, quite a few. There's people, the vast majority have had a abuse problem. They have sunk into habitually using, uh, i.e. addiction. They've sunk into that and it's, uh, it's destroyed their lives because they continue on. In the end, people who become abstinent, in other words, who get clean, I don't have any use for the term sober, except in other contexts which don't relate to chemical problems. Uh, for instance, how do you get sober from methamphetamine? So one of the definitions that the NA Nazis used to use when I was in the program of, of sober was short of being entirely recovery. Right. It, it doesn't paint the whole picture. You don't get sober from cocaine. And while those two stimulant substances cause uh, intoxication, it's not a stupering intoxication like alcohol or barbiturates. Clean is a much better term because it means you've gotten these substances out of your body. Moderation is a term that's better for a lot of people. Because most people, they don't want to. They don't want to have to give up their use entirely forever. They don't. Now, if they don't learn to practice moderation, in other words, a good thing to do, and we've learned this from other experts in the field, that you get clean, you stay clean, you learn how to stay clean, you learn how to moderate using other. Uh, substances like food. You learn how to moderate your food. You learn how to moderate intake of things like coffee. Uh, there's really no moderation for cigarettes that works. I mean, cigarettes destroy you. And when you learn how to moderate and you set limits, for instance, if you're going to drink, which I don't advise drinking at all, except very occasionally for those who can do it on a very limited basis. In other words, maybe one, maybe two drinks at most. And then take a bunch of time off from it. That's what people who don't have a problem with it do. They don't drink, drink, drink. They don't binge. They don't do those things. And why? Well, you know, these are common sense decisions. These are health decisions. If you do a lot of drinking, it's going to mess up your organs and your body. It's going gonna, it's gonna to screw up your brain. So you don't want to do things that tear up your body. 
You really don't want to do those kinds of things. It's not a good idea. Um, the same is true with other chemical substances. I'm not going to tell people, don't use this, don't use that. I'm going to tell people, stay away from street drugs. Don't use other people's prescriptions. You know, be sensible about all of this. Um, you know, Carl Hart has some great, Dr. Carl Hart, he's written a book about all this. And um, it's a very good book. And it, give, it gives a blueprint on how, uh, how to uh, take drugs successfully. And the, the people in the 12-step programs, they, oh, boy, they hate that. Oh, man, you can't do that. Nobody, you, no, no. We, you know, one of the things in the NA basic text says is we learned that, um, and I'm paraphrasing it, that complete abstinence was the only thing that worked for us. Well, only for a few of us. And I practiced complete abstinence for 30 years. Now, the people in the program didn't get me clean. The people in the program didn't keep me clean. The people in the program, some of them supported me, and that was very helpful in the early days. After several years, they weren't necessary uh, for me. Uh, I had emotional problems, psychological problems. I did a lot of therapy. I did self-development training. I did a lot of outside things, which I found to be far superior, many, many times superior to the 12 steps. The 12 steps, as I've outlined in my criticism of them, are, well, they're bullshit. Now, they work for people because they believe in them. I mean, you know, if you believe that farting is bad in a public place and you go into a bathroom to do it, that works for you. Other people, they just keep farting. Uh, it's So it's a personal choice. You see, all of this breaks down to a personal choice. Now, there are some, a very few, that get clean involuntarily. They didn't want to get clean. They were forced into it by something, by, by uh, legal circumstances. They were forced into it. People actually made them do it. Uh, uh, so, uh, some of them got clean and stayed clean because they liked it once they stayed clean for a while. Okay, it was great. I stayed clean for 30 years. It was great for the most part. It was great. Then as you get older, as I got older, and the damage that I suffered from, uh, you could say from my addiction, or you could say from my poor choices, I'd rather call it that, because addiction, uh, I pretty much, when I was using heavily, I stayed sequestered. The only problem I had was getting out and driving after having a lot to drink. That was basically stupid, and I suffered the consequences of that. Funny thing is, never got in a car wreck, and I got in a lot of car wrecks when I was intoxicated. Never got in one. Crazy, huh? Now, I'm not defending drinking and driving. I'm just saying it just didn't happen for me after driving around with a point two or close to point two BAL for years. Okay? And, you know, during those times, I spent a lot of time not drinking, drinking occasionally. Uh, <clears throat> I had a pattern of moderation, and what I learned is I could practice that without the 12-step program, because the 12-step program does not preach moderation. It's all about abstinence. Now, if you want to stay abstinent and you think it works for you, it'll probably work for you if you adhere to certain principles. I don't like The principles are so weak because they're all based in secular Christianity, which I find abhorrent. So I recently got a comment uh, on the YouTube channel here uh, from someone uh, who said what I was saying in my in my uh, vlog that he responded to was all about I self and me, which is another downplay, another deprecatory statement about people who take responsibility for getting out of their addiction, but for beating and overcoming their addiction. And most people beat their addiction on their own without any help. A lot of those people, the majority that, that if you want to call it recovery, I don't call it recovery, but the majority who change into something more healthy practice moderation. And there's about 30% of them that practice abstinence. That's far better than the 3 to 5% that the 12-step program does. Far better. There's no comparison. 
There's really not a, a valid comparison. Okay, so you're a 12-step person. You like going to the meetings. You like uh, working the steps with a sponsor who's not an expert. You, you like doing all these things, and it works for you. That's great. Okay, great. I did it for a long, long time. However, I learned that it was, a, for me, it was a fucking joke. What worked was me making decisions not to get myself into jam-ups using drugs and making poor decisions that cause illegal behaviors, criminal behaviors. That's what worked. It all boils down to daily decisions, like the program tells you that. Choosing to stay clean on a daily basis, no matter what happens. That's what works. It's not the steps, it's not the meetings, it's not any of that. It's, it's personal choice and building the self-confidence to do it. It's hard to get self-confidence when you're told you're crazy and that you can be restored to sanity. Uh, it's not self-confidence when you're told uh, you have an incurable fatal progressive disease that unless you cease practicing it, <laughs> you're going to die. You're going to go to jail. Jails, institutions, you know, the nut house and death. Does that is that helpful? Is that compassionate? We don't think so. No, there are people in the program, in in the twelve step fellowships that are compassionate, that attempt to help people by supporting them because it's the support that works. The research has shown is it's the support that works. It's not the steps, not the means. It's support. Support. If people feel supported particularly by those who love them. And, of course, there's a lot of people in the 12-step fellowships who claim they love everybody, and they don't because it's not practical, ridiculous. They don't love everybody. They can't. They're not able to love everybody. That's human nature. You can't, it's tough to escape from human nature. This is the struggle that we have with the fanatics. The fanatics come in and say, well, you're just practicing. All I heard was I sell for me. I didn't hear anything about helping others. Well, I did help a lot of other people help themselves by teaching them that life was full of daily decisions. By example, showing them that the decisions I had made, which weren't all great, they weren't all good, they weren't all successful, making successful decisions, making uh, positive decisions, uh, making rational, tempered decisions changed my life. It wasn't God, because there is no God in my experience. It wasn't the steps, because the steps are made filthy by the secular Christianity, in my opinion. And they tell you you're a bad guy, and uh, if you don't, you know, you can become a good guy, and God's going to help you do it. That's bullshit, in my experience. It's bullshit. Other people will debate me on that. Well, in the end, they all chose to do the next right thing because they learned what that was in given situations. And it was a choice for them to do the crime or to not do the crime. And I've seen a lot of people in the 12 step programs, a lot of people, <laughs> that's ridiculous, who continue to be criminals while they're in 12 -step. Continue to be pedophiles, actually used drugs and sold drugs, practice prostitution. I've seen a lot of that. You know, so the old saying, pardon my use of the term sober, but what do you do when you sober up a horse thief? You get a sober horse thief. And until people make choices to do rational, healthy, legal behavior, they're going to be stuck in that bullshit of jails, institutions, and death, and they can get there. And we've seen people go to prison clean and spend years in prison clean for crimes they committed while they were clean. That happened to my own sponsor of 20 years. And he admitted he, he made the choice to do what he did to get him in jail for four years. No, it, it boils down to choice. You do get the freedom in abstinence if you learn how to make rational decisions to make healthy choices, to make rational choices. 
Now, God, some people want to believe that God leads them to these. No, God's not leading you to these things. You are choosing. And I constantly heard people not taking any credit for their, quote, recovery, unquote. I don't call it recovery because you're not restoring something to its original condition. You're creating a new condition. And it's not really recovery. It's, it's lifestyle change. And I've seen people do that. And they did it without the program. I used to run into people who'd been clean for years, who had happy, productive lives. I said, we don't see you in meetings anymore. What happened? Well, I just, there's just too much toxicity there. And I, I have a good life and I have a good marriage and relationship and, and, and everything goes well for me because I learned a couple of things. I didn't let addiction enter my life and take over. And that's the whole thing. You can stay out of addiction and not be 100% clean. You can stay out of addiction and stay completely abstinent. There's choices there. If you don't learn how to practice moderation, which a lot of people who, quote, go back out, unquote, do, then they get really, they get really deep into addiction again. And some of them do fatal overdoses or wind up in jail or get shot or whatever. Yeah, some of them really mess up bad. And that was a choice they made. Instead of choosing to practice a rational, healthy way of life, which they could have learned from other individuals in that fellowship. And there are individuals there that do that. And I've known many. And I've known many who left because it was too toxic. And they just wanted to have a good life. And they're having a good life without the program. That, that's my rant. So if you want to criticize me for trying to accuse me of being narcissistic, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm confident. I'm not 100% confident. Nobody is. I'm very confident in what I do with my life, and I'm very rational about my decisions despite what I might do. And then I've also found that as, as, as I got older, uh, I had a lot of maladies that pursued me. I had a lot of problems, a lot of spinal problems, a lot. A lot. I had liver problems. I had all kinds of problems as a result of getting in uh, car wrecks, weightlifting, um, and also some of it addiction. Uh, so, so now I have to take certain therapeutic drugs. I don't like it. I don't want to take anything. Um, I use a little cannabis because it helps me sleep. And when I can sleep, my body can heal itself. I do take prescribed medication like gabapentin occasionally. I don't really like it because I don't like the way it makes me feel. Uh, I, I do things under a doctor's direction for the most part. So if, if you're looking for a way out of the mess, there is a way out. It's called making good decisions and getting support from people who love you.